Welcome back to New York. It's Alex Belfield back on Broadway, and we've come to one of my favourite hotels, the Four Seasons, to their wonderful garden restaurant, and uh, I'm joined by Chef John Johnson. How are you? Very well. Thank you very much for joining us. Oh, well, thank you for having me. It's always nice to come back here. I've been coming for years, and to sit here at lunchtime and have what is fine dining presented quickly. You've got this down, haven't you? Because it, it seems to me, having just spent the last three weeks eating great food, it's not as simple as it looks to get great food served quickly with top service. Yeah, well, you know, fortunately, we're, we're here in New York. We've obviously got access to great local markets uh, in season, uh, which is why we call the restaurant The Garden, uh, really focused on local ingredients and, and presenting them very casual, you know, very casually so that they're, uh, they're easy to, to approach for lunch, for dinner, for uh, the afternoon snack and that sort of thing. So, How does a hotel like this get someone of your caliber? How do they tempt you in? Is it the location? Is it the name of the Four Seasons? Is it the food that they guarantee the quality of? Why are you here and not somewhere else? <laughs> well, I guess it's all those reasons. Uh, really, the Four Seasons is one of the absolute best companies in the world to work for, uh, aside from just the hotel company itself. Uh, you know, being here in New York, as I said, it's really the center of the universe for everything uh, financial, uh, political, and, and, and in terms of the, from the culinary perspective, it's really uh, the center of the earth. You can get anything you want, any season, from anywhere around the world. How is the world of gastronomy doing right now? I mean, I noticed that uh, here at the Four Seasons, the L'Italia is gone, which in my opinion is probably the best restaurant in the world, whether it's here in London, in Las Vegas. Are people prepared to spend the amount of money they were, let's say, 10 years ago? Absolutely. I think it's uh, very much the same type of demand. It's just that the uh, the supply has increased. There's so, much, so many uh, other great restaurants in New York that uh, the competition level is very high. Uh, other cities as well. You go to Chicago or L.A. I mean, there, there are just so many so many great restaurants around that you can go to that it's just a, it's a level of competition that's raised instead of the, the market. And again, it's never been cooler to be a chef. I'm always amazed that people want to do it because it seems to be the hardest job in the world. You're here at sort of nine o'clock in the morning and still here at 11 p.m. This is not a job where you can phone it in, is it? Definitely not, uh, especially an operation like this. Uh, we oversee the restaurant, we oversee the hotel, the banquet space, the room service for the 400 rooms. Uh, it, it never shuts off, and you're in the city that never sleeps. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a definitely a full-time job and a passion commitment. I had the yellowfin tuna today, the Tatar version of that, which was just divine. How do you make sure that everything is consistent? I mean, it was so beautifully presented and, of course, fresh and all the magnificent flavors around it. I mean, when you're churning out food after food after food to this enormous hotel, it, it's really tough, isn't it, to do it at that high level? Yeah, it is. And, you know, we try to keep the food here simple. We don't put any more than really four, uh, four ingredients on, on a dish at any given time. We really focus on their presentation and teaching how to present them the same way every time. And we always ask people to taste and taste and taste again. Uh, it's probably the most important component. Uh, and, and it helps to keep everything really consistent. And again, you're only as good as your ingredients. So if you've got great ingredients, it's easier to put a great dish together. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's, that's the other thing. Uh, you know, again, to go back to uh, why we're called the garden, uh, we try to keep the menu very focused on the season. Uh, winter, spring, summer, fall, we always try to keep it uh, very relevant to what's around us and what we can get so that we're not uh, stretching, the, stretching the truth on anything. Is your job at this point as the executive chef here at the hotel to sort of stand at the pass and make sure everything's up to standard? I mean, are you the back there still cooking food? Because, I mean, you've got a busy job, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've always, I'll always remain at the pass. Uh, not that I'm actually cooking anything at the at this level. You don't, you know, you don't go in there and cook, but we do go in there and teach and and show people how to do things and establish the standards and, and check them on a daily basis. Every service, breakfast, lunch, dinner, banquets, everywhere, everywhere I go, the food goes out. I recently interviewed Gordon Ramsay, and I said to him, with opening all these restaurants around the world, he's just opened three in Las Vegas in two months, which is. Some would say ridiculous. How do you find people who care as much as you do? That's the skill, isn't it? Is it easy to find people who are obsessive about food as you are? Well, I don't think it's. I think it's easy to find people that are obsessive, uh, but to find people that are willing to take the uh, the, the back row, the backstage, if you, if you will, uh, instead of being always out in the spotlight and just hone your craft and hone your career through many years, working as many kitchens as possible, as many cities and countries that you can, just to really develop your internal passion for it and your, and your knowledge base is uh, is what it's really all about. I always say that you guys really are sort of theater people, that there's an art to what you do, there's a craft to what you do, and mostly you're generally show-offs because this is your Broadway show, isn't it? What you put in front of us. There's, there's great passion there. There has to be to make it that good. 
Yeah, I think that's that's why that's why I'll never be able to uh, have or be a chef and not see what's going out at the pass at all times. You know, it's truly that's our stage. Um, what, when it goes out to the dining room, no matter who it is, uh, just to see the reaction on their face, positive, and 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 see how they light up when something amazing gets put in front of them is, is what it's all about. You mentioned earlier about the the traveling thing. I always say the same about radio presenters. Until you've been fired from about ten radio stations, you don't become a radio presenter. It's the same uh, with working in kitchens. You need to see different chefs and how they operate and, and the food they use and how they use that food to sort of have an understanding of it. Yeah, it's really important. I've been so fortunate to work with so many great chefs. Uh, even, uh, you know, I, w- I went, would go and work for free in Europe. I would come here to New York City as a very young young uh, cook who didn't know anything and worked for free for as long as I could for whoever I could. And I managed to work with some of the greatest chefs, you know, who, in the world now. And uh, what an amazing experience it's been. And in terms of your dining room, I mean, it's beautiful. It's here. It's called the garden, and it looks like a garden. Um, It's classy, but as you say, it's relaxed. Getting that balance is very tricky, isn't it? Yeah, it really is, especially in a hotel. We're in an open space, so uh, we wanted to to create something that's not exclusive, uh, that you can serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner, that keeps it approachable. Um, You don't need, uh, you know, three weeks in advance reservations to come here and have have, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it has a real natural feel to it, so we like to keep it casual, but present it nicely in, in, in an elegant sort of way. And of course, this is New York City. You never know who's going to come through the door next. Does it add an extra buzz when you have somebody in who everybody's aware of? Absolutely. Uh, you know, the Four Seasons Hotel New York, there's always something happening uh, in that sense. There's always someone coming through the door. Uh, there's always a uh, Fashion Week, uh, UN General Assembly. There's just so many celebrities and important folks that come to our hotel. It's, it's an everyday thing. Is it still exciting for you to find a new restaurant where they're doing something new and creative? Absolutely. Uh, we're constantly, constantly going out to eat, uh, to lunch, to dinner, to breakfast, just to, just to see what the edges are in different areas. Uh, you know, my be, it might be a presentation, it might be an ingredient, it might be, you know, a preparation, a sauce, or something that you just just inspires you. Um, you know, if it's not that, it's a it's a publication, a book, or a magazine, or you know, digital publication. And when you eat as often as I do, and you do in these various restaurants, it's amazing how little things can get it so wrong. Whether it's just one server who annoys you, the chair that makes you sweat. I mean, there's so many elements to having a great meal, aren't there? There is. It really is. I mean, it's it's uh, it's amazing when you sit down and, and think about all the things that go into it. It's definitely not just about what's on the plate. And in terms of your creativity, I know you've just changed uh, the menu very recently and you continue to do so. Uh, that's not just, I presume, for a seasonal thing. That's to keep you on the ball and keep you excited about your menu. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of both. Uh, we really try, like I said, be in line, very in line with the market. Uh, we're, in, we're in winter now, so we have all sorts of beautiful squashes and kales and cabbages and stuff like that happening. And local fish as well. We have a beautiful cod from Massachusetts, local striped bass, uh, everything that, that's from right around here. Um, and we definitely, we, we changed the, the menu. We we don't call it seasonally. We just we, we we sort of go on our whim, and then we feel we see great stuff in the market. That's when we start changing the menu. You know, we don't have a regimented uh, dates when we change the menu. So it's it keeps us keeps us on our toes. Uh, for my entree, I had the beautiful hanger steak, which was just so beautifully cooked, and the and the dew was it was just amazing, full of flavour. And and as it was brought towards me, I could smell it, and I just wanted to eat it. There's a technique there, isn't there, about not overcooking it? I mean, a great steak is a great steak. Leave it as such. Don't cover it in stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the best thing that, that you can really uh, consider when you're cooking any kind of steak, large, small hanger steak or otherwise, uh, the really trick to it is to let it rest. You know, if you got a nice uh, char on it or a roast in a pan, you base it, uh, always let it rest before you serve it. It let, lets the meat relax, all the natural juices come back into the meat, and then when you eat it, it's delicious. And then, of course, we move on to dessert, and you have some of the finest here in New York. Um, again, it's the last thing you have in your meal, and it's the last thing you remember. If it's not very good, you're going to go away thinking, yeah, might not come back if it's amazing like your desserts were. Um, you had the little lollipop thing and the chocolate. I forget the name of it, but it was just magnificent. Yeah, we, uh, again, we're, you know, we try to be, we try to be fun and lighthearted with the desserts. Uh, we had sort of a, a melting creamsicle was one of them, and we're really trying to approach the season that's coming in now with citrus. Um, we, that's a little uh, mandarin and blood orange. The center is a blood orange jelly surrounded by a little whipped panna cotta and the glaze is a mandarin glaze. We use all fresh, freshly squeezed juices to make all those things. Uh, the other one was a, a, a pineapple tart, which is also in season. And the uh, the chocolate is just a, a decadent chocolate dessert. Layers of chocolate marshmallow and crispies and glaze with really rich dark chocolate. All of my favorites. Exactly. What I love about this restaurant as well, there is a tendency in America generally, but in New York and Las Vegas, any place which gets tourists to offer ridiculous amounts of 
of everything. And I've always said I'd rather have something this big that's delicious than this big that tastes of nothing. Um, th- there is a temptation, isn't there, in this town and, and places like Las Vegas to go over the top to impress, and, and it doesn't always work like that. Yeah, that's definitely the case, uh, especially here in New York. You know, people are, are here on business lunch where they're, they're dressed, dressed really nicely before theater or, uh, you know, they have a special occasion dinner. They don't want to have a, have a chore out of eating. It should be something really memorable, focused on the flavors and the ingredients without too much uh, fanfare to, to, to complicate it. John, really lovely talking to you today. Thank you very much for having me here at the Garden. It's at the Four Seasons. You can't miss it. One of the most legendary hotels in the world, and that's why you're here and, and head chef. Thank you for talking to me and having me. Thank you very much. Enjoy your stay.